What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Electrician U. Today we're going to talk about four-way switches. So what is a four-way switch? Well, a four-way switch is, as you can see, I've got three different boxes set up. A four-way switch is something that you would use when you're in an environment that you have a room that has three doors around it. So say you want to come in to a living room, and that living room has, on one side of it, has a door here where you can get in from the front door, has a door over here where you can get into a bedroom, and another door over here where you can get into the garage. You want to be able to control the same one light in front of all of that. Um, so you would need three switches to do that. So a standard three-way only works if you have two switches, so you need what's called a four-way. And a four-way you can actually install up to infinite amount of switches if you want to. They just still call that a four-way. So here I've got three boxes set up you're still going to have a hot side where your incoming power comes in. And I've already got that run, that wire run just to save time. I've also already got the leg run on this side that goes up to a light. So with these three boxes, pretty simple. You're always going to have a hot side just like on a three-way. You're always going to have a leg side. Those two are not going to be mixed in the same box ever. You're going to have one be on one side of the situation and one is going to be all the way at the other end. So if you're putting six of these together, you would still put your hot on one side, and then you'd go the next switch, next switch, next switch, switch, next, blah, 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 all the way to the end, and that's where you would put your leg. And in between all of those, we just run travelers. It's pretty simple. So again, if you haven't seen the three-way video, go back and watch that, and you'll understand how travelers go from one switch to another. So in this situation, we're actually going to run from this hot, we're going to run some 12-3. So that is a... Uh, a three conductor wire with a ground. So there's actually four wires in it, um, but you're gonna have a black, red, white, and a bare ground. Like this. Black, red, white, and ground. And what we're gonna do is from our hot side, we're gonna run a traveler to our next switch. And then from that next four-way switch, we're gonna run another traveler over to our leg side. And that's it. As far as the wiring, you just have one, two, three, four wires. So let's get to it. All right, so I've already pre rolled out some 12.3. So I'm going to run this 12.3 from my leg side and go up into my four way box. Notice I labeled that four way. That's always going to be your middle box or your several middle boxes if you have multiple. And I'm trying to do this a little quickly because I'm running out of daylight and it's gonna start getting dark pretty soon. But there we have our leg, a traveler. And now we have to run one more traveler from there over to that box. try to run my wire as straight as possible and try not to leave any kinks in any of it.
And uh, something I always try to do, instead of stapling each one of these wires independently, um, I stack two of them together and I don't staple either of them until I've got two of them run. Notice I didn't run, you know, any of these and staple them one at a time. I wait to staple until I've got two wires. It's another just good habit to get into. Now, I'm a little anal about things looking pretty. So, I'm going to try to get these wires to get, you know, nice and neatly together. I still need to leave enough hanging out of the box to work with. You want about eight inches. That's actually only about six inches, so I'm going to pull just a little bit of slack down. And you don't want to hammer these down too much or else you'll pinch into the sheathing and you can short the wire out. All right, so last one to staple is over here on our leg side. Again, I'm going to staple these two down on top of each other instead of using individual staples. And there's a knot there, of course. Uh, you'll find out soon enough that when you try to put a staple through a knot, it don't work. Knot wins every time. All right, so that is our basic setup. We've got incoming hot, our traveler goes to the next box, traveler goes to the next box and then you have your leg coming from that final box that goes up to the light pretty simple so one of the thing that I almost forgot to talk about was labeling your wires make sure that you label everything like this one says leg and I'm gonna have to write traveler on this one this is a pretty easy setup so I mean this is one that you that you're probably not gonna forget too easily but it's a very good idea to always get in the habit of labeling all of your stuff so that's a leg I'm gonna label this TRV for traveler and then I'm gonna label the one that comes from that side I'm gonna label that out TRV that means that's the outgoing traveler I'll explain that in a second this one if I trace it goes over to our hot side so I'm gonna label this one in TRV that's our incoming traveler and our outgoing traveler. Um, the way a four-way operates, if you actually look at the switch, is, I don't know if you can read that very well, but uh, it says out here and it says in up here. So you have your incoming side, your two travelers that go in there, and you have your outgoing that go there. So that's how we're going to wire it once I actually get everything ripped out. All right. You can start on any side that you want to. It doesn't really matter. Some guys like to start on the line side. Some guys like to start on the uh, the leg side. So I'm going to start on the leg side. I'm going to get my knife in there. Leave about a quarter inch of sheathing in the back of the box. Just make a slice on each side. And then pull the sheathing off. And then I'm going to cut my little flag off that I made. And I'm going to take the red and black wires twist them together. This just tells me visually when I look at this that it's a traveler that these red and black wires have something in common and then I stick my traveler uh, tag on there. I'm gonna rip the ground off. I'm sorry, rip the paper off of the ground. Next one do the same thing. I'm just gonna score the wire very gently. Don't push down too hard so that you score the actual wire. You're just trying to score the sheathing enough for it to peel off. I'm going to take my flag off the wire and on the black wire only I'm going to stick the leg flag. So now I've got my traveler and my leg. Got to take the paper off again. Alright, now I fold all of these except for the grounds out of the way, and I always deal with the grounds first, just a matter of preference, because I normally stick the grounds all the way in the back of the box. 
So we need to twist those together a few times. I usually like to get the uh, twist to come about, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches out of the box. And then grab it with your clines and you really tighten down. And I even pull back on the tool, like I pull back because it just gets more tension on there. And you want a really good tight spiral. That makes sure that these grounds are touching and they have complete surface area the entire way that they're touching. There's no gaps, there's no loose parts where this ground can come undone. Next thing I'm going to do is take my green wire nut, green because it has a hole in it, unlike any other wire nut. I'm going to twist this on there, make sure that I've got everything um, really tight. You don't want to over tighten, but you don't want them, you know, this thing sliding off. And then what I do is I fold a cordy in it in the back, and then I fold the, white, the nut up, and I try to get the nut all the way in the top, and then I fold these down and just accordion it all the way in there. Get it out of the way. Next thing I do is take my neutrals. I'm gonna pre-fold my neutrals, so let me give you a little bit better angle. I accordion all the way in the back on the bottom, and then I accordion it again up in the top, and then I figure out what I need to cut off here for it to get in the back of the box. So I'm already pre-figuring out what my length is. And then I pull them back out, strip off, try to use a 45 degree angle when you strip instead of coming at a straight angle. That may, that, it just makes it a little bit easier when you cut it at that 45 degree angle and you pop it forward. It already pops some of that copper or some of that sheathing off the copper so it just makes it a little bit easier on you. It's less work. Alright, then I'm going to twist these two together. Make sure that you have really good joints, that your uh, your tips line up. And once I have a good joint, I'm going to back my fingers up a little bit and twist the front of the wire. So that way that insulation, you know, the whole thing is, is tightly together. There's no way that wire is going to come apart. I'm going to cut this at a little bit of an angle just so it's not a flat surface to try to go into that cone. I'm going to try to make it a sharp surface. That way the wire nut bites on it a little bit better. And then we're going to accordion everything back in there and try to push it all the way to the back. That way there's room for our switch. So, the only thing we have left are the three wires that are ultimately going to go on our three-way switch. So a four-way system uses two three-way switches and one four-way switch. You're going to have a three-way on the leg side, a three-way all the way at the beginning on the hot side, and then you're going to have a four-way switch, which I just showed you a second ago, and that's going to go in the middle. So for now, I'm just going to put this guy up there. No, I'm not. So I'm going to get these accordion down, accordion up, and figure out what length I need to cut them. Something I do, it's just a kind of anal thing that I do. You don't have to. I like all of my wires to be coming down from top left to bottom right at a 45 degree angle. That way, um, if you ever have an inspector come through and walk the house and he goes and looks at every box, every single plug when it's ripped out, all the wires are at an angle, 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 angle. It just looks really, really neat. It's an anal thing, but an inspector will look at that and be like, wow, this guy's really neat, clean. He does good work. He's thought of a lot of these things and he's tried to take precautions and, you know, like making yourself look better when an inspector shows up is always great. So that's why it's really important to do clean, neat work and, you know, do everything in straight lines. When you're drilling holes through walls, like drill, if you have to take a stick, like, I know I'm getting a little bit off uh, off my task here, but here, <laughs> the only thing I have is a baseball bat. But what I do sometimes is I'll get a pipe that's long enough, you know, that's up to here, and I'll mark a line on it with a marker. And that way a helper can go down and hit this on the floor, and they've got a mark already where all the plug heights go. So they just put this down, they take their marker, and they go boom, and then they go to the next one, they go boom, they go to the next one, they go boom. So I mark my boxes out like that, but I also mark holes out like that. When I'm going to drill holes, 
I'll have a helper go through and just mark at the top of this pipe every single place that they go all along a wall. And that way when we go to drill out, we know exactly where we need to drill out. And then, you know, say you've got like two or three holes because you've got multiple wires going through a wall. I do the same thing. I'll pick like three different heights that are evenly spaced, perfectly spaced apart. And I'll drill one hole there, one hole there, one hole there. And I'll mark all three of those on this so that every single one of them is the exact same. And again, it's just a really aesthetically, it looks good when you walk into a room and everything is perfectly run at perfect angles and nice 90 degrees. Just an anal thing. So on the next thing. So the second box we're going to touch is our four way. First one we did was the leg. Second one is going to be the four way. I'm going to rip this out the same way. I'm going to reach in there, score that wire on the top, score it on the bottom. 12 3 you have to be a little bit more uh, arduous with because it's a round. Um, it's round sheathing. It's not flat like 12-2 is. 12-2 is a little bit easier to score on both sides and pull off. All right, and then I'm going to cut my tag off. This is my incoming traveler from the hot side. I'm going to twist these together. And stick my tag on it. And rip that annoying little paper jobby off. Get it out of the way. Same thing on the outgoing traveler. Score it on the top, score it on the bottom, and pull off. Pull our little tag. This is outgoing traveler. Alright, so now we've got our incoming and our outgoing in out. Now we have to do the same thing. We've got to rip it out, get it ready for the device that we're about to put in it. I'm going to twist these grounds together, tighten it. Cut the excess off. Green wire nut. Fold this guy in the back. Accordion down. Accordion up. And I usually go down, up again. And if you got any extra slack, cut it off. Next is our neutrals. We accordion down. Accordion up, cut the slack, these travelers we're going to do the same thing accordion down accordion back and cut off any slack same thing top left bottom right looks pretty and finally we're at our hot side I already marked it hot um, from a prior video and oh what I didn't do it was mark T R from a traveler. Take my tag off, twist my travelers together.
Twist my grounds together. Next, neutrals, accordion down, accordion up. That one's already cut to length, so I'm just going to go with that. Strip this guy out. Anytime you've taken joints apart and you're going to be putting them back together, don't just use the wire all bent up and twisted like that and try to bend it over it's going to end up in a really fucked up looking joint and you don't want that so always straighten your wire back out some guys are just really lazy and don't care to do that or don't want to do that and that's fine if they've got experience and they know what they're doing and they don't care about making shitty joints let them do what they're going to do but you you want good joints you want nice clean um, perfectly spiraled joints that have the maximum surface area touching. Accordion down, accordion up, and fold back. That leaves us with three wires because again, on this hot side, we're gonna have three terminals to put three wires on. So, Last step is accordion down, accordion back, and boom, daddy. All right, so one thing I didn't talk about is this side, obviously, we have a hot and a traveler. Um, I explained that already, but I just wanted to show you the tags. All right, so everything's wired. We've got everything ripped out. All of our boxes are ripped out. Last thing that we do is just put our devices in and then we'll hook up power and test everything. But I just want to go over that again very, very quickly. We've got our incoming hot, so they're going to have one black wire there. We have our two travelers, our red and black, that come over to this box. And then we have another set of, red, uh, of travelers, red and black, that go to this box. And then in this box we'll have two travelers and our leg that goes all the way up to the light. Done. So now let's put the devices in. All right, guys, just because I like you, I decided to go super pro on you. And I got three matching devices. So I'm not going to use those toggle switches. I'm going to actually use three of these that look the same. All right, so now let's take a look closer. We'll put our devices in and test this baby out. So I'm going to start on the leg side. doesn't matter which side you start on, really. It's just the side I'm going to start on. We've got our green, we've got our black, and we've got two golds. So the reason I twisted these two travelers together is so I wouldn't get confused which black is which. Um, the black that's by itself, the leg, is going to go on the black screw. The two travelers, red and black, are going to go on the two gold screws. And then our ground is going to go on our green pretty simple. So I'm going to bend a hook on this guy and we need to actually with Decora switches um, notice there's a little plate in there and that plate goes in and out. You can slip a wire behind those uh, instead of bending a hook on the outside over here. Just flip them out, slide the wire in. So that's what I'm going to do. You can't do that on the ground. The ground doesn't have a separate plate that slides. Uh, so you do have to bend a hook for that one. So I don't pull too much off, being that I'm just sticking the wire in. I don't pull like a solid inch or inch and a quarter like I would if I was going to bend a hook. So I do maybe about a half inch. The 
leg goes on the black screw and you can literally pick whatever your favorite color is and put it wherever you want the traveler does not matter so I'm gonna go red on top and black on the other side one other thing I'm gonna do is go back and just hand tighten each one of these a quarter turn make sure that they're very very tight because a lot of times your drill doesn't get these screws as tight because you're using Phillips alright so push everything back in there we want it to accordion like we had already pre-folded it and we want to make sure that our ground wire does not come in contact with any of these uh, terminal screws so try to get the ground to go all the way in the back <clears throat> and it's even getting a little close on me back there so I'm just going to manually move it out of the way I usually only put my switch in about halfway at first that way I've got room to wiggle it because this one's a little crooked if you get it cinched all the way down you can't move it all right that one's done now our next box is our four-way and you'll notice in this one we have four wires to deal with two sets of travelers our incoming and our outgoing and conveniently enough our four-way switch has four screws to put wire on so pay attention to the in and the out the in you can just put um, black and red on black and red on red and black it doesn't matter side to side as long as your incoming goes where the in says and your outgoing goes where the out says so same thing on this guy the ground I have to bend a hook can't get away from that but my travelers I can uh, strip another little half inch off put my ground on first because that's the way I do it you know what holy shit just notice this this one actually does come with a plate so I'm gonna stick my wire through that plate and cheat because that's what it's listed for now in general I have to put the disclaimer in that uh, I don't like just putting uh, wires in a plate and letting that pressure plate hold it I like bending screws um, so it's up to you your personal preference if you want to stick it like do what we call a stab in um, stab ins just have a tendency to come looser quicker um, so a lot of guys don't like doing stab ins and I totally agree with that philosophy um, but for you know GP for right now I'm just doing that because again I'm losing daylight here all right so my incoming travelers I'm gonna stab in these holes my outgoing Go back and torque all of them just a little bit more. Um, loose terminations, loose connections is a, a, a really huge problem in our industry. So making sure that everything that you do is very, very tight and electricity is very important. Um, the reason things burn up. Uh, nothing ever burns up like just in the middle of a wire somewhere right here 
it always burns up at a termination point where something was loose, heated up, started to separate, and started arcing in between there and creating a bunch of heat and melting. So always, always, always very crucial. Make sure that you terminate things very, very tightly. Not too tightly to the point where you're going to st strip something out or, you know, break it, but you don't want anything loose. That's why the NEC actually has torque, specs, uh, torque specifications for everything. I'm just using my handy dandy little strippers to uh, straighten this guy out because it's in there a little crooked. Last box, guys. Uh, my three-way on this side does not have a handy-dandy little plate on the ground, so I do have to bend a hook. My hot. I'm going to cut a little bit of that off. Eh, cut a little too much. That's good. Strip my travelers out. Now, the same thing on a hot side as on the leg side. You're going to have a black screw two gold screws and a green screw and actually there's already some wire you can tell this is a used switch all right so just like on the leg side the hot side you're gonna have your twisted pair and that's again the reason that I twist them is so you know these two go together there's something in common they both go on the gold screws this one that's by itself the hot goes on the the black screw so I hook my ground up Sometimes those grounds are really hard to get in there. You have to loosen up the terminal a little bit. It makes it easier to get it, um, get it to push in there. And since I've used this guy before, some of the screws are still tight. All right, so I'm gonna put my two travelers on whichever two of these gold terminals I want to because again it does not matter once you started getting into like maestro switches or you know like Lutron anything automated um, a lot of times you do really have to be careful about uh, what order you put your travelers in but for the average house it's just regular plugs and switches you don't have to worry about that when you do have to worry about that you'll already have so much experience that you'll know when that's going to be an issue all right fold everything back make sure again our ground's not going to be hitting anything and shorten our circuit out um, since this is a used three-way switch it doesn't have any screws with it so I'm just going to put some black beads some of your jurisdictions some places may not allow you to put any sort of uh, drywall screw or anything in a plastic box that's actually kind of a common thing in some bigger places if that's the case don't do that I'm just doing that again for illustration purposes limited in my garage don't judge me all right let's screw our bulb in hopefully our bulb is good awesome so it's on so if we flip any one of these switches it will turn this light on or off. So again, I just want to illustrate the idea, the whole reason that we're doing this is that, you know, we're in a room that has three different ways to get in the room. So say, you know, you're out in the driveway and you get home and you come in the front door and the light's off, you want to hit it on. But then you get over to your stairwell and you want to be able to shut it off here. And then over in a bedroom somewhere, you know, you get your kid sleeping or whatever and your kid needs to be able to come out from that room also and turn the light on and walk over to the stairwell and turn it off you know they can go anywhere 
And again, you can do this to however many switches. You can have like 15 if you wanted to. It's kind of ridiculous, pretty stupid. There's better ways of, of wiring um, and doing things. There's uh, getting rid of a lot of switches. There's Lutron makes Radio Raw, uh, Homeworks. There's a bunch of different automation systems where basically you just have a bunch of little push buttons. You have keypads and it uh, talks through radio frequency to all of the other devices. But we'll get into that way, way, way later. So anyways, that's a four-way, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave some comments below. Go to Electrician U. Check out. Um, you can also comment on there. I've got all these videos on there. I'm starting to do articles as well. Um, probably not going to have some articles posted for quite a while because I'm trying to get some really, really thick, dense content out. I'm trying to do some electrical theory stuff and kind of go from, like, day one not knowing a damn thing about electrical to explaining things. Um, I'm kind of doing it in a Q&A format. Um, I'm asking questions like an apprentice would ask, and then I'm answering them. And once I've answered them I and mean, I've gained understanding, then I ask, well, what's next? You know, so now that I understand that, then how does this work? Um, so it's going to be a really cool way of reading articles, but I'm going to go into much more detail of what I was just doing in written form with pictures and all of that. For some of you that um, don't learn best by watching a video, you learn best by reading things and looking at pictures. So. All of that stuff's coming, but again, this is all just me doing all this, doing the Journey Master, doing all of this, doing all the web design, um, working still, being a dad, being an involved husband, making dinner for my family. So my content might be slow, but that's just my life, man. I'll put it out when I can put it out. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for following. We just hit like 3,000 subscribers on Electrician U, and that happened fast, like really, really fast. Um, Journey to Master, I think, is about to hit 6,000. So thank you guys so much for giving a shit, and uh, I just want to make everyone better electricians, and I want people out there that are better than me, which I know there's very, very many. <laughs> if you have any comments or cons you know, like constructive criticism about the way that I do things or the way that I'm explaining things and you think that there's a better way, definitely leave it in the comments. Reach out to me. Say something about this. All of this stuff is about bettering all of us and trying to make all of us better electricians. I just There just needs to be more content in our trade out there. If you have any other ideas for videos, if there's something that you want to see, definitely leave it in the comments below or go to the Electrician U Facebook page. Shout me out there or go to electricianu.com and shout me out there. Just let me know somehow, uh, whatever your ideas are. I do have some more stuff coming up very soon, some electrical theory things. Probably going to do how to do this four-way setup in a California or in a legal way. It's essentially the same thing. I'm probably not even going to do a video about it. If you can watch the three-way video and watch the Cali three-way video, you can watch this four-way video and the same thing applies. You just have a hot set. Never mind. I'll do a video. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Peace out. Bye. Bye.